So the next example is we talked about one-to-one -one property with exponents. And if you guys remember, exponents, we had exponents. What we did is we had exponents were very similar with our logarithms, right? We could write an exponent in logarithmic form, and we could write a logarithm in, logarithm in exponential form, right? OK. So, so far, we talked about our one-to-one -one property for we talked about log, um, exponential form is x to the m equals, or x to the m equals x to the n, then m equals n, right? And you could use whatever variable. You could use a and b like I did before. But you guys need to understand that if you have the same basis, then the exponents can be equal to each other. And I proved this by doing this logarithm. Um, 2 to the x equals 2 to the fifth. x has to equal 5. Right? And that makes sense when you kind of use some numbers with that, correct? So what I want to do is I want to explain, now let's use the one-to-one -one property for logarithms and see what it's going to look like. So if I had log base x of m equals log base x of n, that means m equals n. So again, just like ex ex exponents, if I have a logarithm with a base x, or with the same base, equal to another logarithm, as long as they have the same base, what we're evaluating each logarithm for are going to equal to each other. And let's take a look at that. If I had log base 2 of x equaled the log base 2 of 5, then we could say that x is going to equal 5. All right. So again, a very, a very important property that we can use is to make sure that we get our logarithms equal to one another. So let's go through a problem, though, where a lot of students are going to make a mistake. So let's say I have an example of log of x plus 1, and let's use log base 5, minus log of base 5 of x equals log of base 5 of eh, 2. Okay, so here's a very common problem that you guys might see um, that we'll go and take a look at it. Now, I put this problem up here because one of the most common misconceptions for a student, Marco, is you'd say, hey, I have a logarithm on both sides, so I have to then do what? Cancel them out, right? That makes sense. That's what I just taught you. Hey, when you have a logarithm, as long as they have the same base, which those do, we don't really need them then. We can just evaluate. But does this? Or does this look exactly like that? No way. No, right? It's not, this is not one logarithm equals another logarithm. This is a logarithm minus another logarithm equals a logarithm. So we cannot just say, oh, eliminate the logarithms. All right? Now, will we have a subtraction symbol? Does anybody remember subtraction? When we subtract two logarithms, we can rewrite that as the, what? As the division or the quotient of one logarithm. Yes? So I can rewrite this as log base 5 of x plus 1 over x. Do you guys agree with me? That's what I talked about last class period. Yep. If you have the subtraction of two logarithms, you can rewrite it as the quotient of one logarithm. And that was what those little practice problems we did, condensing, right? So now, do we have a logarithm equal to another logarithm? Yeah, and they have the same base. So now I have x plus 1 over x equals 2. So now I need to learn how to solve this, right? Well, remember, guys, we can get the x off the bottom by multiplying x on both sides. So therefore, I have x plus 1 equals 2x. Subtract x, subtract x, 1 equals x. And there you go. That's your final answer. OK? OK. That's it.